All right, my bad. This this uh, system closes in the middle of a lesson. But anyway, I'm on verse. Well, let me jump to ten. Second Ezra sixteen and ten. A fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is it? He that may quench it. You see, so all these these verses that I've just read in Second Ezra three, first all the way to ten, it's talking about these missiles, man. We're going to jump to 13. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. So these are these are those modern plagues, like I told you, the missiles. You know what? It's not talking about a regular arrow because what regular arrow you know can be shot to the end of the world. No, it's, it's describing missiles. <clears throat> which are plagues, a modern plague to the wicked. That includes you two-third Israelites who don't want to hearken unto this truth. You know, you're, you're already ordained to be a, a sheep to the slaughter, you see. Uh, Second Ezra 16 and 14. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? You see, so Ezra, he said that because he saw the, you know, he saw the, uh, the plagues. He saw the vision. He's like, Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Because in those times, they understood regeneration. So Ezra knew that he would be back again prophesying, you know. Someone out there, you know, from these Israelite camps is Ezra. We just don't know who it is. Because there's no remembrance, it tells you in Ecclesiastes. I think it's chapter 7, verse 11. But, you know, basically, that's that's just a, a testimony and a scripture explaining um, regeneration. Because Ezra understood that his soul would be regenerated. He would be back on earth again. Something that the Christians can't, can't understand. Uh, let's see. Go to 20. 21. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. All right. So victuals means like affordable food, you know, cheap food, like it says. So basically like McDonald's dollar menu, you know, all these different places where you can go feed your family for under 10 bucks or whatever. You know what I mean? So basically... You think you're in a good state because you have that um, you have that opportunity, right? You could even just do DoorDash, twelve bucks, and you're gonna feed your family, you know, in a Babylon. So that's what it says. You think you're in a good good situation, but the evils are still gonna grow, all right? For many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So even if you don't starve to death, you're going to get killed by the missiles. And the dead shall, well, I don't even need to read that one. Let me just jump to 33. The virgins shall mourn, having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn, having no helpers. You see, so these women, it's going to be a tough time for women, according to the scriptures. Verse 37, behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, with two or three hours of her birth, great pains compass her womb, which pains. When the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. O my people, hear my word, make you ready to thy battle, and in those evils be as pilgrims upon the earth you see so literally these plagues are coming and they're not going to be slack 
All right. <clears throat> Let me just bring this out real quick. Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation and the fear of Yahweh is his treasure. All right, you see? The wisdom and, and knowledge is going to be stability, meaning the understanding of this Bible. That's going to be the only thing that can save you, all right? So let me see here. It says, 2 Ezra 16 and 73, Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. All right? <laughs> so let's go to the salvation. That's because you're going to know who the chosen is by our salvation. You're going to see this getting taken up in the so-called UFOs, the chariots. So let's read it. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. All right, so the righteous man, the one who out there preaching this truth, you know, according to the Holy Spirit, and uh, you guys don't make no account of our labors. You don't care that we're out there teaching. You two-thirds don't care. You know, you you Babylon, Babylonian uh, uh, grape juicers, which are you modern Christians. You know, you... you um, you, you, two thirds, you so called Latinos, blacks, and Native Americans that want to hearken unto uh, Esau and his doctrines, you know, you, you haven't made no account of our labors. It says, verse 2 When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. And the reason why it says that is because. You guys don't picture us going up in chariots. You're going to be amazed at the strangeness of our salvation. And you're going to be looking at those UFOs, which are actually chariots of Yahweh, chariots of Israel. You're going to be looking at them with terrible fear. And it's so far beyond all that you looked for. You never saw that coming. All right, you never seen it coming, man. So let me jump to Zechariah. Oops, Zechariah 13, 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. All right, so that's talking about the two-thirds of Israel is going to be cut off and die by the missiles or by the famine or by one of those plagues that Yahweh is going to send on the earth. Verse 9, And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, Yahweh is my power. So you see, that's that gold again. Remember we read about the the you know the verse in, I believe it was in Esdras, where it was talking about... You know, the people that are going to be saved are compared to as gold. And because it's going to be rare, there's going to be more people that die from all these plagues that Yahweh is sending on the earth than is saved. All right, you're going to be like gold compared to the earth. The earth is made of tons of elements, but there's just a little bit of gold, it's precious, and so is the salvation of the one third in the elect. All right, but with that. I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem, Harakakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. Also, when acknowledge knowledge, all the Akiyam pushing this truth with sincerity in Babylon, America. All right, may you endure to the end. Shalom to the elect.